In today's video, I will show you my oil painting process of how I build my new style of portraiture, which I now refer to as persona portraiture. This is going to be demonstrated with my 2020 self-portrait. You'll see how I start with a simple grid that portions my canvas into thirds vertically and horizontally. Next, I'll sketch very lightly where I want the head to sit in the composition. I'll be using erasable colored pencils to lay down my sketch, starting in yellow, then moving on to vermilion to solidify my initial marks. Next, I will continue showing you the process of how I painted my first layer, known as the underpainting. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox and SJC Sport Couture. Okay, here you see me sketching in um, the head, the body, just lightly with the yellow colored pencil. It's going to be hard for you to see my marks because they are really very light. And these pencils are great for working with the initial sketch. They do erase completely and the oil paint that I use plays nice with them. It doesn't cause any weird marks to come through the actual paint. Here to the left in the screen, you can see the Prismacolor erasable colored pencils that I use for the initial sketching portion. Also, these Da Vinci Pro panels, they're ultra smooth gesso panels, and they're made of New Zealand pine. They're really cool. You can draw on them, you can use markers. Uh, it works really well, and then you can paint along with it. It takes pretty much any medium that you want to use. Okay, now you're gonna see me checking what I've sketched in lightly against the actual proportions on my computer screen. So the proportion tool set for a one-to-one -one measurement works really great with this. And the reason I know it's one-to-one -one is I looked at what size I wanted the head to be on the canvas and then I measured it with the proportion tool and blew up the image on the computer screen until they were equal and that ended up being a 30% zoom. And I just make note of that. So each time I pull up my reference and zoom into the 30% mark. So I'm still working in the yellow colored pencil until I solidify these marks and I know that they're exactly where they need to be. Then I will come back in with the vermilion. Okay, I've gone ahead and sketched in the features with the vermilion and now I'm just double checking that things didn't get blown up or moved in the sketching process with the proportion tool. And just solidifying a few more details like where the shadow is going to lie exactly. And then we'll move on into the painting phase. So this is more of an indirect method for painting. Um, I'm going to be working in about a three-day um, process where the first day's paint will be put down and let dry and then the next day if it's dry to the touch then we'll come in and move on to that painting phase. Take your time with the drawing phase. Don't rush it. Uh, it's just really going to lay down a good solid foundation so when you start painting you don't have to worry too much about where you're laying the paint and you can be a little freer and have fun. There's other ways to do the initial drawing phase. You may want to put a projector up, um, go ahead and use transfer paper. It's up to you. You just want to get down some initial marks so you know where your composition is going to be and however that works for you to get it down, that's what you want to do. Sometimes I even do this initial stage with actual oil paint where I'm just sketching with oil paint. It just depends what my mood is. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, let the fun begin. Now, I'm gonna be putting the background in with black acrylic paint. I want it to dry quickly, and I, this canvas takes the acrylic beautifully, and it lets me just get the background in, and I know it's gonna be dry by the next day, so I can go ahead and start my oil painting. So you may be wondering why I call this my persona style portraiture. Well, the definition of persona is a person's perceived or evident personality. So the background of these portraits are going to give clue as to the person being painted. It's gonna give you some information about maybe their goals or ambitions, their hobbies, things they're interested in, things that are about their life or what maybe they aspire to and it's going to let you get a glimpse into the person that they are. I really think it's a fresh, new, contemporary way to get a portrait done. Um, some people may think that portraits are passe or old fashioned, who's gonna want a picture? But I think in this style, it's more interesting and fun and who wouldn't want that? So, if you or someone you know would love to have a persona portrait done, just message me and we'll work out the details. Here you can check out some of the uh, persona portraits that I've done in the past. You'll recognize these guys, they're YouTubers. We got 1000, Happy D, and Ergo Josh. You can see more persona portraits on my website at ShellyJCox.com. So have you figured out what I'm putting in the background here yet? I'll give you a hint, it has to do with fashion and illustration. Okay, fashion illustrations. <laughs> I really like using a lot of black and white in the backgrounds. Uh, it plays really good against the skin tones being that it's a neutral and it gives it sort of a contemporary edgy feeling too. Okay, coming in with some bright pink. Uh, I really wanted to have another layer before the subject against the background to add a bit more depth. And I chose the pink. I really thought it just played uh, nice off the skin tones. There's a lot of pink in the skin. And it's also, I love pink and black. The initial layer of pink that I laid down went in a bit dark, almost red, so I went back over it with some white and a little lighter pink just to brighten it up. Okay, time for the underpainting. This is gonna be the first pass of flesh colors. I'm gonna start with the forehead and move my way down the face. Now, this is just the initial uh, block-in of color. It doesn't have to match perfectly. What I'm really looking to do here is see that I capture where the shadows go and that I get a bit of the transition done correctly. I don't want the transitions to be too big. I don't want the steps of the transitions to be big. I want to keep those steps small and close together. And that's kind of what I'm working on in this initial stage. We can go back during the second stage and do a little bit more color correction for the skin tones. I'm going to be close in the first underlaying of this flesh colors, but that's not my uh, main goal here. If you're wondering what colors I have out on my palette, I will put a detailed list in the description where you can find that.
information. So the light source is coming from the top left of the figure and I want to establish the lightest light in my face and that's going to be at the top of the forehead towards the left and as I come down every part of the light section below that will not be as light as the light in the forehead. So when I'm putting down lights below the forehead, I'm going to compare it to the forehead, always working off of that lightest light, making sure that I don't go brighter than it as I'm working my way down. Now, on the opposite side, with the darks, I don't want to go as dark as possible. I want to leave room to darken things on the second pass where I can build up the contrast. So in this initial pass, I'm trying not to put my darks in too darkly. Also, who's to say that I don't want to change or manipulate the expression slightly and if I put really heavy darks in, it's going to be hard to change the expression or move things and it won't be a giant move, it'll be slight, but if the paint is mid value to just a little bit dark, then it's a lot easier to move things. I don't want to be married to this sketch, it's just here as a suggestion of where the features go but I may want to move them slightly, corner of the mouth up, uh, eyebrow nudged in one direction, just to manipulate the expression. So as I move over the face features, I'm trying to feel as if I'm sculpting the face. I wanna roll down that edge of the nose and underneath into the shadow area but I want to do that with transitions. And one of the great things that I've learned throughout my painting journey is that painting in transitions with actual colors of paint, rather than blending the paints together, is going to make all the difference in how the final outcome of your painting is. It's really going to give you a better 3D result. Your skin tones are going to have a lot more life now some areas of the face, like here inside the eye, the transitions are really close together. There's not a lot of room and you've got to pack them in tightly. But where the face moves into the cheek or the chin, even in the forehead, the transitions are bigger and you have a little bit uh, more wiggle room there. Now we're into the eye and I'm thinking about values here. And I know you guys know this and you've probably heard it a million zillion times. The white of the eye is not white. You have to look at that as far as is that eye in shadow or is it in pure light. Either way, it's going to not be white. In fact, it's usually pretty dark. Hey, if you're getting some value out of the video, hit that thumbs up button. Also, you can help support my channel by subscribing and also ring the bell to be notified that I put up a new video. So the hair, the way it's falling across that left side of the face is creating a shadow line and that's what I'm establishing here. Initially, I'm starting with a pretty neutral skin tone. I don't want to add too much color in the initial stage. I'll save that for the second pass. In this part of the video, I'm showing you my actual painting speed. I wanted you to see that I paint really slow. It's <laughs> There's a lot of thought to each brush stroke that I put down. So as I move down the face, I'm asking myself, is this area more yellow? Is it more gray? Or is it more red? Because those are the three colors that I'm seeing throughout the face. And usually what you find in portrait is that the forehead tends to be in the more yellow skin tones while you come across the middle part of the face where the cheeks and nose are you're going to have a bit more red and pink in that area 
then you come down around the chin and it gets pretty neutral, kind of gray or greenish gray. I don't want any harsh edges. I really want to make my eyebrows blend softly into the forehead here. Well, maybe I shouldn't say blend, but rather transition softly. Still thinking about rolling across or over the face, coming rolling underneath that eyelid, rolling through that nose and into the tear duct area. And then I'm gonna roll over the lower part of the eye and I'm going to roll into the shadow of the nose. Really think about feeling each bump each crevice. The face is uh, by no means flat. Even here in this tiny feature of the eye, I'm transitioning from that farther uh, corner into the iris and into the pupil and I'm not taking just full steps across the eye. I'm transitioning from one stroke to the next with a slightly lighter or slightly darker color. And no hard edges around that iris. It should meld softly into the so-called white of the eye. So the eyes of the portrait are the vocal point. You want to have the most contrast in your face where you want people to look at first. So the eyes, obviously, being the vocal point, will need to have the most contrast. Hence, my pupil will be the darkest dark in my painting. However, I'm not going at it uh, directly in this first pass with like a pure black. It's still... Uh, maybe a value six, seven. That is with black being a value of 10. Okay, you can see here there's a bit more pink to the cheek area as compared to the forehead. So it can be tricky here as we move into the smile lines of the face. You don't want to paint those too harshly. It can age your subject. Um, but with a smile this broad, they are going to be present. So I'm going to have to treat those um, carefully as we move through the painting. While they are called laugh lines, they are not lines, they are shadows. I'm keeping my shadows pretty neutral. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, a grayish purple shadow color working now. Uh, I'll fine tune that on the second pass. But mainly what I wanna do here is make sure that I establish where the shadow is and how it transitions or rolls towards and into the lighter areas.
okay this upper lip is rolling away from the light and moving into shadow as it comes down towards the teeth the upper lip here is thin but there are transitions happening as it rolls into the teeth and the outer corners of the mouth are in complete shadow and then as you move towards the center of the mouth where the teeth are in the middle it's going to be lighter and then roll back towards the shadow again I'm going to paint in the lip color uh, before I attempt to paint the teeth. Uh, teeth are not white, much like the white of the eyes, so I want to establish some context with the lip color and then I'll be better able to gauge the value of the teeth. Also, you don't want to have harsh lines where the flesh color of the skin is meeting the redder lip color. It needs to transition <laughs> softly. Moving into the teeth now. So the lower teeth are obviously way in shadow, so they're gonna be gray, but the value is still somewhat light. And then as we're on the upper row of teeth, they're in shadow a bit, but um, you wanna show good transitions as each tooth is rounded on its own, but then also the whole uh, direction of the upper jaw and teeth is rounded. So you have to consider that as one round unit with individual round parts. <laughs> I hope that made some sense. So the color of the teeth, we're going to have a bit of an off-white. There's going to be some pinkish grays in there because it's reflecting the lip color. And the um, parts of the gum are a bit dark because they are in shadow, but they're also in the reddish color. So with teeth, it has to be drawn absolutely perfectly. If the teeth are off, your portrait is going to be off. So definitely take your time when painting the teeth. Measure with proportion tool or whatever objects you have and check it against your reference and make sure that it is exact. It's all about the teeth and eyebrows when it comes to portraiture. <laughs> trying to be sure to show in my transitions here how the lip, the flesh color of the upper lip rolls into that colored portion of the upper lip. harsh jawline either so make sure that transition is soft so sorry I forgot to zoom out a little bit here but I'm just laying in the basic flesh tones that I used in the face for the shoulders and um, upper chest area I'm going to do a complete cover of any flesh areas with this first day's painting and the second day I'm going to be able to come back over it. It'll be dry and I can paint right on top. So be sure to look for day two of our painting process of the self-portrait. Uh, we'll be starting with a little bit of oiling out and then we'll be moving into the um, more detailed specific colors of the flesh and thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please do and uh, I'll see you in the next one <laughs>